for some encouragement. Since late June, things have looked relatively better. Inflation was nearing its peak. Stocks were recovering from record lows. All they need was some clarity from Powell. Any indication that he would ease up on monetary tightening. In other words, no more interest hikes. That's what everyone was hoping for. Instead, Jerome Powell delivered a war cry. He promised more rate hikes until inflation cools off. At some point, as the stance of monetary policy tightens further, it likely will become appropriate to slow the pace of increases. Restoring price stability will likely require maintaining a restrictive policy stance for some time. The historical record cautions strongly against prematurely loosening policy. For a central bank governor, that's saying a lot. He is not satisfied with small gains. He wants to decisively defeat inflation, and that means a lot of pain. Slower growth, fewer jobs, and tighter budgets for smaller households. Basically, the perfect recipe for a recession. Immediately after the speech, we saw some indications. U.S. markets began hemorrhaging money. The Dow Jones closed 3% down. NASDAQ closed almost 4% down, and S&P 500 closed 3.3% down. Put together, investors lost a lot of money. America's richest lost around $78 billion. Imagine that. One eight-minute speech and $78 billion wiped out. Elon Musk lost around $5.5 billion. Jeff Bezos, $6.8 billion. Bill Gates, $2.2 billion. Warren Buffett, $2.7 billion. And it's not just the U.S. Powell speed sent ripples across Asian markets. India's Sensex closed 1.4% down. Japan's Nikkei was 2.7% down. Taiwan, 2.3%. South Korea's Kospi, 2.2%. The question is, how? How does a policy announcement in the U.S. affect emerging markets? Because of three reasons. Number one is borrowing. Most countries still borrow and repay in the U.S. dollar if the Fed hikes interest rates. That becomes difficult. Governments will have to spend more to service their debt. Reason number two is a sell-off. During such times, capital tends to flee emerging markets. Emerging markets lose money because investors prefer safer bets. For example, U.S. Tre Treasury bonds, they're safe. So all the liquidity heads to the United States. All the money goes there. And finally, reason number three, imported inflation. When the Federal Reserve hikes interest rates, the dollar becomes stronger. Take the Indian rupee, for example. Today, it briefly touched 80 against the U.S. dollar, which means imported inflation. Anything that you buy from outside, outside of India, becomes more expensive. It could be raw materials, it could be finished goods or services. Anything that you import. Some of the bigger economies are relatively insulated from these ripples, like China, India, and Japan, but others will feel the pinch, like Argentina, Turkey, South Africa. It will come down to the Federal Reserve's next policy announcement. It's due in September, and by then, they will have more data to chew on. America's jobs report will be out on September the 3rd. The August inflation numbers will be out on the 13th. If the data is good, it could be a 50 basis point hike. If not, another 75 basis point hike and a third one in a row. Now, all these hikes are aimed at cooling inflation, at bringing prices down. But the obvious risk is recession. These measures could trigger a recession when you have more aggressive hikes. You could stall the global economy, especially in the current condition. You see, central banks have limited tools to tackle inflation. Their biggest weapon is liquidity. That's basically cash flow in the market. They want to control that. If you hike interest rates, borrowing will come down. If borrowing comes down, so does liquidity. And if liquidity comes down, so will inflation. That's the basic rule of economics.